Kellogg's Pep, the super delicious cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman. And today, the Man of Steel tells a story, a wondrous story of the planet Krypton and how he, Superman, came to Earth. Almost a year ago, as some of you will remember, a flaming meteor fell out of the sky and landed in an open field in a suburb of Metropolis. Brought to the Metropolis Museum by Dr. John Whistler, a famous meteorologist, it was discovered to be a piece of kryptonite, a fragment of the shattered planet Krypton. Sent to interview Dr. Whistler at the museum, Clark Kent, in reality Superman, discovered to his horror that if he approached within a distance of ten feet of the strange green glowing meteor, he lost all his strength. Panic-stricken, he influenced Whistler to seal the meteor in a private vault. But now the meteorologist is dead, and Kent is fearful lest the vault be opened and the dangerous piece of kryptonite fall into strange hands. As we continue now, Lois Lane and editor Perry White are at Kent's apartment, where Kent is about to tell them why he seems so worried. Listen. This is a strange story you're about to hear. I just hope I can trust you to let it go no further. Now, don't be a fool, Kent. What is it? Well, it concerns Superman. Superman? Yes. As you may or may not know, Superman was the only survivor of the planet Krypton when it exploded in space many years ago. He came to Earth as an infant and grew up to discover that he had strange and unusual powers. I mean, he had impenetrable skin and, and tremendous strength and the ability to withstand fire and flame. He also had the power to, to, to leap great distances and to sustain himself in midair. Oh, perhaps I better go back and tell you the whole story, huh? What story? The story of how Superman came to Earth, Chief. What? Well, how do you know that, Clark? Uh, oh, I I'll explain later, Lois. First, I want to take you on a far journey, millions of miles from the Earth, where, not so many years ago, the planet Krypton burned like a wondrous star on the heavens. Here, civilization was far advanced. It had brought forth a race of supermen, men and women like ourselves, but advanced to the absolute peak of human perfection. Yes? As we near Krypton, we see high walls and gleaming turrets. We approach the magnificent Temple of Wisdom with its dome of pure crystal shimmering like a diamond in the sun. There, in a great marble hall, Jor-El, Krypton's leading man of science, is about to address a special meeting of the planet's governing council. Council members, I have completed my solar calculations, and much as I dread uttering these fateful words, I have come to the conclusion that Krypton is doomed. <laughs> gentlemen, 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 hear him out. Let me try and explain, gentlemen. The sun is gradually drawing Krypton closer to it. Within a month, possibly only a week, the gravitational pull will be so tremendous that Krypton will not be able to weather the strain. And then, then our planet will explode like a giant bubble, destroying every living thing on it. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, assuming for the moment, jor that what you say is true, how are we to avoid this catastrophe facing us? How can we stop it? It cannot be stopped, Roseanne. It's a force of nature that even we, who are supermen, are powerless to prevent. But there is one way to escape. Escape? What do you mean? As you know, I've been working these many months on a model of a spaceship, which in its final form is designed to carry the entire population of Krypton to another planet. If you will assign to me a thousand skilled workmen, I will endeavor to construct the spaceship before the end comes. It is all well and good, jor to speak of spaceships, but where would we go? To the planet Earth. My studies tell me this planet has an atmosphere almost identical with our own. jor you've been working too hard. You need a rest. Believe me, we have the utmost respect for your knowledge and integrity, but this is too much. Planets as large as Krypton do not explode. Wait! Wait, do you hear that, gentlemen? I hear only a distant thunder. It is not thunder, Roseanne. That's an internal eruption gas exploding in giant pockets. You're listening to the forewarning of doom. Quakes like that are sounding the death knell of Krypton. It will happen, gentlemen, and happen soon. And when the last great eruption comes... When it comes, jor we will all be ready for it. If Krypton is to perish, we will perish with it. But I assure you, jor your beard will be long enough to trip over before that time arrives. <laughs> Very well, laugh if you wish, Roseanne. Laugh, all of you. But a time will come, and that time is perhaps very close at hand when you'll wish you had heeded the words of Jor-El. <laughs> order, gentlemen, order. 
Members of the governing council, you have heard jor speak. Is it your wish that we devote time and energy to build a spaceship in order, as jor suggests, the entire population of Krypton be transported to the planet known as the Earth? Oh. All in favor, say aye. The council has spoken, jor Yes, and signed the death warrant of every living thing on Krypton. There remains only one thing for me to do. Prepare for the salvation of my wife, Lara, my infant son, and myself. As for the rest of you, may God have mercy on your soul. Leaving the Temple of Wisdom with the mocking laughter of the council members ringing in his ears, jor hurried to the terrace of his hilltop home and feverishly set to work on the steel model of his spaceship. Time was short, as he alone knew. A matter of days, possibly only hours. Driving home the last rivet, he stepped back to examine the bullet-shaped spaceship, only to discover his young wife standing behind him. Oh, Lara, I, I didn't hear you come out. You were too intent on your work. What did the council say, jor -El? They laughed at me, Lara. Marked me for a fool. Even Roseanne? Oh, he above all. But no matter. The model is finished now, and tomorrow at dawn I'll send it on its way, watching its flight through the high-powered telescope on the observatory roof. And once I have proven to myself that it works... I will begin building a spaceship large enough to carry all three of us to the planet Earth. jor I feel faint. It seems to have grown oppressively hot. Is that because we're being drawn closer to the sun? Yes, there's a strange glow on the western sky. I, I don't like it. Where is Kellogg? Asleep. I had quite a time with him. He was restless all day. jor what was that? An internal quake. A bad one. jor -El. The house is shaking. Easy, Lara, easy. What's happening? It may pass over. Uh, you'd better go in. No, no, my place is with you. jor look. The sky, it's darkening. Lara, this is the end. Krypton is breaking apart. jor jor We'll return in a moment to find out what happened on the planet Krypton. Well, here I am back again, Pep Gang, to tell you all about the wonderful offer Kellogg's Pep has for you. In case you've missed this big news before. Yes, Surrey gang, Kellogg's Pep has really outdone itself this time. It's offering you the smartest looking all aluminum sundial wristwatch you ever saw. With a real strap. Now, wherever you are in the sun, this terrific time teller will give you the hour of the day. In a minute, I'm going to tell you how you can get this one. But let me tell you all about it first. This sundial wristwatch lies flat on your wrist until you're ready to use it. Then you just lift the shadow hand or pointer and aim it due north. And presto, you have the time of day just by seeing where the pointer's shadow falls on the dial. Why, could anything be easier? And this handsome sundial wristwatch is about the size of the usual wristwatch. Now, here's how you get one. Just send two box tops marked top from two packages of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep, along with 10 cents in cash and your name and address, clearly printed to Superman, Box 157, Battle Creek, Michigan. Be the first around your part of town to own this real sundial wristwatch. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. In his guise of Clark Kent, Superman is telling Lois Lane and Perry White of the last minutes on the doomed planet Krypton. How his father, Jor-El, had just completed an experimental model of a spaceship when a strange blood-red glow appeared in the sky and a series of thunderous crashes and deep rumbles, increasing in intensity, shook the ground under the feet of Jor-El and Lara, his young wife. Lara, this is the end. Krypton is breaking apart. What can we do, Jor-El? Oh, nothing. I was a fool for waiting this long. Oh, it wasn't your fault, Jor-El. The council... Oh, I should have built a spaceship months ago, and now we have only a model. Oh, but wait. It can carry one of us to safety. You, Lara. No. No, if only one of us can be saved, it should be our son. You wait here, I'll get it. Lara! Lara! No, perhaps she's right. It should be the boy. Oh, now, if I can only get this atomic generator working, build up enough pressure, I hope there's time. There. Jorel. Yes? Here he is. Still fast asleep. Here, I'll open the door. I'll put him inside. Gently. Jorel, are you sure? Hurry, hurry, Lara. He's in, Jorel. Here, good. Now, now stand back, Lara. Pressure's building up. How long will it take? Oh, I don't know. Look, the Temple of Wisdom's on fire. All the towers are crumbling. Here, come close to me, Lara. The end is not far off. The mountains are breaking up. jor the pressure. What's happening? It's building up slowly. Perhaps we're too late if it doesn't happen soon. 
Clara, it's gone. Our son, our son is on his way to Earth. Screaming through space, the tiny steel rocket headed toward Earth, leaving the glowing fragments of the exploding planet Krypton behind it. Good heavens, Clark. Go on, Kent. That baby in the rocket, it was Superman, wasn't it? Yes, Chief. That is, he grew up to be the person we know as Superman. And now I'm going to tell you and Lois what happened to him and why I need your help so desperately. You see, jor had set the directional finders and the tiny rocket ship bearing his infant son toward this planet, Earth. A strange expression on his face. Clark Kent begins to tell Perry White and Lois Lane what happened to himself. What is the rest of the fabulous saga of Superman? And is Kent, now in such grave danger, actually going to reveal at last that he is Superman? Don't miss tomorrow's exciting episode, fellows and girls. Tune in, same time, same station, and listen to... The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday. Same time, same station. By the makers of that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman DC publications. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.